Hi, welcome to this demo of IBM Spectrum Protect version 8114, multi-factor authentication. This provides another layer of security to our admin command approval that we introduced in 819. It can be used in conjunction or separate from the admin command approval and is for Spectrum Protect administrators. This diagram covers how MFA works with Spectrum Protect administrators. First, you're going to have a Spectrum Protect administrator register, update other administrators to use multi-factor authentication. When that other administrator goes to log on, they will be shown a QR code or a shared secret code in text. They will use that to log on to a security app to generate a six digit token that can be then used in conjunction with their password when they log on to Spectrum Protect. So the MFA is set up by an administrator for each of the administrators they want to turn MFA on for. And that's with either the register administrator or update administrator command, and then MFA required equals yes, or if you wanted to turn it off, no. There's also this shared secret equals command if you do want to utilize the same shared secret for multiple Spectrum Protect administrators. And there is a reset shared secret option if you want to reset a shared secret because, for instance, you lost your mobile phone where the application was that was storing that. You can issue a query admin for many equals detailed. If multi-factor authentication required is set to no, that means it is not required. If it's set to yes, that means it is required and the administrator has already enrolled with an application. And if it's in transitional, then it is required, but the administrator has not yet enrolled. And until they actually enroll and log on with MFA, they will not be able to issue any other commands. So the administrator has to log in using not only their traditional password, but also the six digit token that's generated from that shared secret. Now, in order to generate this six digit code, you do need to use an application with RFC 6238, which is using TOTP, which is a time-based code generator. It needs to use SHA-1, generate six digit code, and have a 30 second interval. Another thing to note is that the devices that you're using to generate the code and the Spectrum Protect 8114 and above servers have to be in sync with the current time. In this demo, I'll be showing you how multi-factor authentication works with the administrator command line. So I'll be walking you through a demo of a system administrator turning on multi-factor authentication for another administrator, that other administrator trying to log on, having to generate the secret, use a application to get the six digit code, and then logging back on with that six digit code. MFA can only be turned on for another admin by an admin with system privileges, but all admins can set their own MFA to on. And you yourself cannot turn off multi-factor administration for yourself. You have to have another administrator do that for you. You can, however, issue a update admin reset shared secret for yourself. If command approval is on and the administrator that you're updating is currently in transitional or strict MFA state, then the update admin MFA required equals no has to be approved by another administrator. If you're using command routing, then the administrators on each server have to have the same shared secret. So that's when you would want to register them with that shared secret equals command. However, if you're using enterprise configuration and the administrator is registered to a profile, then the subscribe managed servers matching administrator names will automatically receive that shared secret. Also, if you're doing exports and imports, the export will export the MFA settings and shared secrets to the importing server. MFA is only for interactive administrator sessions. So if you're using scripts or any other unintended operations, don't use an admin with an MFA turned on. If you currently have it set up so that your administrator ID is being used for both interactive and unattended sessions, then I suggest you register a new ID 
to use specifically for the unintended operations and assign that ID a strong complex password that's only going to be known to that automation. Now your clients, like the backup and archive clients, are not affected by multi-factor authentication except if you're logging in using an administrator credentials, for instance with the help desk, then the administrator is required to use MFA and append the six-digit code to the end of the password like you'll see us doing in this DSMA DMC command line. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and get started with the demo. The first thing you're going to need to do is find a multi-factor authentication application that supports RFC 6238, where you have set the authentication to TOTP, which is a time-based code generator. You've chosen SHA-1 and six digits and a 30 second intervals for the codes. So make sure you've selected all of those options correctly. From the command line, we're going to log on using DSM ADMC as the administrator admin, and this administrator has system privileges. MFA is supported with the DSM ADMC version 8.1.2 and above, or version 7.8 and above, as long as it has the new SSA authentication. The next thing we're going to do is register a new administrator. So we'll issue a register admin. Demo1 will be the admin name, and demo demo will be the password. You could have also used the MFA required equals yes with that registration command, but I wanted to show you if you do a query admin demo one format equals detailed, you'll see that currently multi-factor authentication required is set to no. When we do an update admin demo one MFA required equals yes, and then reissue that query admin format equals detailed, you'll see that that now is in state transitional. So in order to exit state transitional, the Demo 1 administrator needs to first log on to Spectrum Protect. So we'll do a DSM ADMC dash ID equals demo 1, password equals demo demo. Now notice at this point, because we are in MFA required transitional state, we are unable to issue any commands except for the help commands or the generate secret command. Demo 1's Admin is now going to issue generate secret. This will generate a random string, which is base32 encoded. It will also have a OTP auth format. So the OTP auth format is a URI, which includes the secret. And then other things that the app is going to need in order to generate the six digit token. And that'll include that the algorithm is SHA-1, that the digit is six, that the period is 30. And then the OTP auth indicates that it is a time-based counter. Now, most apps just want the secret, which you see here on the top. And so once you copy that, you'll go ahead and log out of Spectrum Protect with a quick command. Now you're going to open up the multi-factor authentication app that you're going to use to store the secret key. You'll specify that you want to create a new account and enter a key. You'll then type in the key that showed up when you entered generate secret. You'll then be asked to enter a name for this account, which is saving the key. So we're going to call it IBM Spectrum Protect. And then you can generate the six digit code required for logging on to Spectrum Protect. The code is good for 30 seconds, so you'll want to issue DSM ADMC dash ID equals demo one dash password equals demo demo, followed by that six digit key with no spaces. You don't have to use the dash password option. You could just respond to the password prompt with the admin password followed by the six digit token. Now you are successfully logged on to Spectrum Protect and you can now issue commands like query admin demo one format equals detailed. And what you'll notice here is that your multi-factor authentication is now set to yes, meaning that it is enabled. 
and that you have used the secret password to enroll in a multi-factor authentication to generate a token, which you've then used to successfully log on with. You will be required to enter the tokens each time you log on. So here, if you quit the program, the next time you go to log on, you're going to have to look at your application, access the current token, and then enter that current token into your DSM ADMC command when you do your log on. Okay, I'm gonna quit from demo one and log back in as the admin. I wanna show you how to do a reset shared secret. You can issue the update admin, in this case, demo one, reset shared secret equals yes. This will reset the shared secret that demo one had stored in their app. So for instance, if the administrator demo one lost her cell phone, you would need a new shared secret. The demo one admin could enter this command, but the reason I'm having the administrator admin enter it instead is I can do a query admin format equals detailed and show you that the demo one is now in transitional state. Remember that when an administrator is put in the transitional state, the only commands they can enter are help commands and generate secret commands. Okay, so let's quit out of this administrative session and we're gonna re-log back in as the demo one. So DSM ADMC dash ID equals demo one. And we'll put in the original password of demo demo. And because we're in transitional state, that's all we need at this point. Now demo one administrator will need to issue a generate secret command. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the secret and this time I'm going to go to a different program and show you how you can generate a QR code instead of having to manually type in that long secret. So from this free OTP two-factor authentication site, I'll first of all give it a name. By default, we use IBM Spectrum Protect. And then for the account, if you have multiple IBM Spectrum Protect account, you might be specific and give it a different name. For instance, we could call it demo one because this is for the demo one administrator. You'll then paste in the shared secret that we generated with the generate secret command. And at that point, you will have a QR code that you can scan with your phone app. When I go to add an account and scan the QR, it automatically finds the IBM Spectrum Protect and demo one information, and then it generates a code. I'm gonna then take that code and go back to the command line and issue a DSM ADMC dash ID equals demo one dash pass equals demo demo and then the six digit code. If demo one issues a query admin demo one format equals detailed, they will see that they are now multi-factor authentication required equals yes. A couple other things, if demo one tries to update their admin to have MFA rec equals no, this will fail. You cannot turn off MFA requirements for yourself. You would have to have another administrator do that. You can, as an administrator, update your own shared secret. So demo one administrator could issue update admin demo one reset shared secret equals yes. And that will once again reset their shared secret and they will need to log off and revalidate their secret. You can assign your own secret to an administrator. This could be one that was already created through Spectrum Protect or it could be a secret that you generate from a website like FreeOTP. So we're copying over that generated secret and then we're going to update admin demo one shared secret equals and we'll paste the shared secret that we just generated. So this could also be used if you had multiple Spectrum Protect servers with the same administrator name, you could go and update the shared secret to be the same 
for those administrators on the different servers. Do note that if you do assign a shared secret, that administrator will be put directly into multi-factor authentication required, yes, because it is assumed that you already have a account that's generating tokens for that specific shared secret. So there's no need to go through the process of scanning a QR code or entering that shared secret into an app. Okay, do check out my other YouTube demo where I show how to utilize the multi-factor authentication when logging on to the operation center. Thank you very much.